Welcome to our video about systemic fungal infection. Systemic fungal infection, symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment. This article focuses on the symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment of systemic fungus. Taking these steps can help you avoid developing a serious fungus infection. Also, early diagnosis is critical to preventing permanent damage to your internal organs. So, it's crucial to treat the systemic fungal infection as soon as possible. Here are some ways to do so. Symptoms Systemic fungal infection is characterized by a wide range of symptoms. Some signs are related to the type of infecting fungus, while others may be entirely unrelated. The rate at which the disease progresses depends on the type of fungi and the channels through that the fungus enters the body. These factors vary from patient to patient. Here are some of the most common signs and symptoms of systemic fungal infection. Among the most common symptoms of a fungal infection are a high fever, gastrointestinal distress, sweats, weight loss, and malaise. In addition, chelated metals may also be able to inhibit fungal growth. These medications work by attaching metals to organic compounds to inhibit the growth of fungi. Hypoglycemia occurs when glucose levels in the blood fall below 50 to 60 mg DL. Symptoms of systemic fungal infection may vary, but the underlying cause of the infection is often local. Often, fungal infections are related to a certain environmental factor or group of people. People with fungal infections should avoid air-conditioned or dusty areas as well as certain environments, such as boarding schools and dormitories. Toxins produced by fungal growth can cause allergic reactions or irritable bowel syndrome. The patient may also experience symptoms of neurosis, irritable bowel syndrome, and asthma. If the infected tissue is in the lungs, symptoms of a pulmonary fungal infection include coughing up blood and mucus. A brown discharge may occur, thick or thin, and may be watery. Pain during intercourse or urination may also be present. In severe cases, the infection may spread to other body parts, such as the groin and the labia. Fungal intertrigo may also affect the atrium and urethra. If you suffer from a systemic fungal infection, the first symptoms may be skin rashes, fever, and a high body temperature. Muscle aches and cramps are also common symptoms. The infection is highly contagious and can spread by direct contact, sexual intercourse, or damp towels. Once infected, it is important to seek medical attention. A physician can prescribe specific medications for systemic fungal infection, depending on the severity and location. Diagnosis The diagnosis of systemic fungi is crucial for effective treatment, but many impediments hinder accurate results. Among these are the ever-increasing diversity of fungi, the increasing use of immunosuppressive drugs, and the limited resources of resource-poor countries. Conventional diagnostic methods include direct microscopic examination of clinical samples, histopathology, culture, and serology. However, emerging technologies are now available to help clinicians and scientists identify fungi and determine the best treatment for their patients. Early detection is crucial for optimal management of fungal infection in immunocompromised patients. A clinical examination will determine the specific antifungal agents to be used. In addition to the clinical signs, the clinician should also monitor the serum concentration of the antifungal agent in the patient to assess the efficacy of the drug and its toxicity. Further, an early diagnosis is critical for a successful treatment outcome. The prevalence of systemic fungal infections has increased in recent years, with the AIDS epidemic promoting the growth of opportunistic fungi. Most commonly, these infections occur in resource-poor countries in South America and Africa. Nonetheless, progress in medical care has led to an increase in the occurrence of opportunistic fungi in immunocompromised patients. Infections caused by fungi can affect the lungs, skin, and blood, among other body systems. The fungi can cause multiple organ failures and are often fatal for people with weakened immune systems. Those who work with plants or soil are at risk of developing systemic fungi. Acute exposure to spores from infected animals can lead to skin ulcers, lung disease, and joint problems. Diagnosis of systemic fungi in pets can be a complicated process, but veterinarians are well trained to diagnose and treat the infection. They will examine the fungus under a microscope. Aspirates of the lymph nodes, touch imprints of lesions, and fluid obtained from washing the airways are good samples. 
Diagnostic tests for different fungi depend on their defining features. The fungus responsible for histoplasmosis is H. capsulatum, a genus causing histoplasmosis. The other is B. dermatitides, which is larger and has a broad budding yeast form in the tissues. Treatment While advances in systemic fungal infection treatment are being made with the improved application of existing antifungal agents and the development of new, promising investigational agents, a significant challenge remains. As the number of patients with impaired immune systems increases, this condition can be particularly devastating. Nevertheless, newer treatments are proving to be an effective way to treat systemic mycoses. Below are some of the important factors to consider when considering systemic fungal infection treatment. First, fungi are responsible for the appearance of congeda. These fungi can grow on your skin. They are common in soil, wood debris, and skin folds, and are found in many areas of the world, including the southern United States, Central America, Africa, and Asia. The fungus Talaromyces marnefe is endemic in tropical Southeast Asia. It is present in normal skin, decaying plant matter, bird droppings, and urine. In addition to antifungal drugs, other drugs that act on the same mechanism as itraconazole have been developed. Fluconazole, an oral antifungal, is far less expensive and can be used in place of itraconazole. The more expensive voriconazole is also effective in treating a variety of fungal infections. In addition to its effectiveness in fighting congeda, voriconazole is also an effective treatment for a wide range of fungal infections. When it comes to fungal infection treatment, systemic treatments can be life-threatening. Early diagnosis is crucial for preventing damage to the internal organs, and the faster a patient can be treated, the better. Andes, an infectious disease specialist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, has studied the effects of antifungal drugs and drug resistance in fungi. Andy says that in the United States, 5% of hospitalized patients die of bacterial infections. Meanwhile, up to 50% of those who contract a systemic fungal infection are not likely to survive even after treatment. During and after treatment, blood work should be monitored closely. Values in the liver and kidneys should be monitored closely. The appearance of lymph nodes can be followed up with repeat imaging. Urine antigen tests can also be conducted to check the health of the lungs. The treatment is long-term, depending on the severity of the disease. Several tests will help the veterinarian determine the best course of treatment. But, invasive candidemia treatment can involve long-term hospitalization and life-threatening complications. Prevention The emergence of new fungal species has significantly increased the number of healthcare-associated outbreaks. Until recently, most fungal infections were caused by aspergillus, Congeda and Pneumocystis gyrovecchi. Fungal infections usually affected individuals with compromised immune systems, such as neonates and neutropenic patients. Fortunately, the latest studies have demonstrated that fungal infections can strike healthy individuals as well. Infections caused by fungi are not easily treated. Topical treatments for infections on the skin or in the nails can help, and oral antifungal medications can treat systemic fungi. Depending on the severity of the infection, systemic medication may be necessary. For serious infections, systemic antifungal medications are often prescribed. In addition to topical treatment, the body must also be protected by a medically approved antifungal medication. The prevalence of healthcare-associated fungemia has increased, and there is an increasing population of immunocompromised hosts. Consequently, antifungal prophylaxis is a valuable way to protect these patients. While it is not clear which antifungal regimens work best, it is known that antibiotic use in the ICU should be based on a patient's risk of developing fungal infections. It is also important to understand why a hospital's water distribution system may be a reservoir for airborne molds. The key to systemic fungal infection prevention is avoiding the transmission of infectious agents. Healthcare providers should avoid the spread of fungi during medical procedures and keep a clean environment. It is important to follow any treatment plans that your healthcare provider may give you. Whenever possible, take the antifungal medication exactly as directed. Follow all medical advice and avoid bringing the infected person home. This will ensure that the patient is as safe as possible. The importance of prevention in fungal outbreaks has been highlighted by the recent outbreaks. 
The specificity of outbreaks further highlights the importance of warning alert systems and general infection prevention. The risk of misidentification is high, but C. auris should be suspected if traditional biochemical mycological methods fail to identify it. The presence of multiple antifungal drugs indicates that C. auris has spread to other areas of the body. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if this was helpful.